This is uh, question 64. 3R test number 5. Now we have to find sigma, triple sigma of 1. Where k varies from 1 to j and then j varies from 1 to i and i varies from 1 to n. Now there are two methods. We'll discuss two methods to solve this question. Method 1 is in method 1 will apply sigma will apply sigma formulas like you know sigma of 1 is j because k varies from 1 to j so we have to add 1 j times right now we need to take sigma of j where j varies from 1 to y we apply sigma n formula right sigma n formula we apply you know sigma n is n into n plus 1 by 2 we apply this formula and we get this now we break this into two parts and we apply sigma where here we apply sigma n square formula and sigma n formula here you know sigma n square formula is n into n plus 1 multiplied with 2n plus 1 divided by 6 right now we simplify this to get this and this is n plus 2 c3 right now we'll see method 2 to solve this question method 2 is like a uh, little difficult to understand so let's just give it a try now to explain method 2 first of all I'll take a double sigma and after understanding the concept on double sigma we'll just do it for triple sigma now let's take this we have to do double sigma of 1 where j varies from 1 to i and i varies from 1 to n now this can also be written like this these two sigmas are connected the values are related or you can say connected so we can write them like this j varies from 1 to i bounded by i and i varies from 1 to n i can take values from 1 to n but j has a upper limit i now to understand this like we we assume a set we assume a set of n numbers say say first n natural numbers now see every value of i and j we can set we, we make two cases i not equal to j and i equal to j if you can see the values i and j will take we can make two cases i less than j where where obviously i is greater than j j is always less than i or or i equal to j right now in this case so basically we have to num we have to if we if every if we have the values of i and j if, in every way we can select i and j from i, I can we can set i and j we have to add one so it is like this if we if we decide a value of for i and we decide a value for j it means we have to add one we can just look at like this if when when i is one j is one when i is 2 j varies from 1 to 2 i equal to 3 j varies from 1 to 2 1 to 3 and, and you can see for every pair of values of i and j we have to count one so number of ways in which we can set the values of i and j is same as same as a sigma of this same as that that many times we have to add one so what we do we select two numbers from this and the greater one we set with i and, and greater one we set with i and lesser one with j so so in nc2 ways we can decide the values for i and j it means nc2 ways we have to count one and this is corresponding to the case when i is greater than j now other cases when i and j are equal the values i and j are uh, taking the i and j are taking equal values like i1 j1 i2 j2 i3 j3 now in this case we select one number from the set and and make i and j both equal to that number so this much number of times we have to count one now this these are the cases when i is not equal to j and i is greater than j this is the case when i equal to j so i and j can be set in this much number of ways nc2 plus nc1 and every way of setting i and j is like every every uh, is same as number of ways in which you can set i and j is same as number of ways we have to count one so answer is n plus 1c2 now let's take the case of three sigmas now k less than equal to y, uh, j, j less than equal to y and both all three are bounded by 1 to n. 
Now we make first case where i is greater than j and j is greater than k. Now in this case we select three numbers from a set of first uh, from the set of n natural numbers or n numbers. We select three numbers. Greatest one is uh, greatest one is assigned to y, middle one to j, and smallest to k. So every way of setting i j i j and k will give us one value of this expression or, or number of times we can set i j k and k such that they are not equal is number of times we have to add one so n c three times we have added one corresponding to the case when i is greater than j greater than k now second case is when i is greater than j but uh, i greater than j but j equal to k i equal to j but both of them greater than k second case in this case we just select two numbers because i and j are equal so we select two numbers one number the greater number we 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 set to y and j and lesser number we set to k and same is true for this case so we select two numbers and we multiply this with two because we have two cases now third and last case is when all the three are equal if all the three are equal we select one number from a set of first and natural numbers and assign it to i as well as j as well as k right so this much number of times we have to count one nc3 when all three are unequal this is when two are equal third is not equal this is when all three are equal so this much times we have to count one means n plus 2 c3 times we have to count one that is same as the sum of the expression